Now, with news about the vaccines for COVID-19 in sight, it is still not a good time for Nigerians or the second wave of the pandemic in the atmosphere. As part of our series to chronicle the major event in the year 2020, Plus TV Africa correspondent Mary Chinda takes a look at the impact of the novel disease. The report is fired from our studios. It was on February 28, 2020, that the first case of COVID-19 was detected and treated in Nigeria, a case that sent shivers across the nation. The government soon swung into action, shutting down markets, schools, churches, national and international flights, and generally imposing a lockdown that lasted for weeks. Wearing a nose mask and using hand sanitizers became a necessary ritual. In May, the lockdown was gradually eased, but seven months down the line, many seemed to have returned to their normal lives with relaxed use of face mask, hand sanitizers, cautions seemed to be thrown to the wind despite government enlightenment. It's almost as though there is no COVID-19 in the country. Just this Saturday, December 12, the governor of Lagos State, Babajide Sonwolu, tested positive for COVID-19. Now, this is only two weeks after the health minister of state warned of the fear of massive spread of the virus following low COVID-19 safety precautions. The ministry further announced plans to reopen isolation centers. From one case in February, Nigeria has recorded over 72,000 confirmed cases and over 1,000 deaths. Dr. Uchi Anyawagu speaks on the possibilities of fresh spread and increased deaths. Nigeria, as it, as, as it is, I'm not even sure we've been able to test up to half a million people over the past 10 months, and that's a shame. But it's not still late for us to declare a state of emergency in our health care so that we can get the necessary equipment, the necessary manpower, stopping our doctors living in droves and developing our infrastructure. When you enter a restaurant, they ask you to wear your face mask. But when you go inside the restaurant, nobody's wearing their face masks. So these are the things. COVID-19 is still very much existing. People are traveling in and out, and it is only bound to happen. These medical professionals agree that going back to the strict observance of COVID-19 safety protocols may be a way out to avoid the economic hazards of another lockdown, which might be necessary to stop the spread. COVID-19 is really it's not a fictitious um, situation that people made up just to pump money anywhere. No, COVID-19 is taking lives. As a public health physician, I know colleagues that I have lost to COVID-19. I think that coronavirus should have made us to be a bit more serious about the healthcare facilities and infrastructure we have in Nigeria. Sadly, I'm not sure that that lesson has been learned. So in terms of testing, Nigeria has performed very poorly. If they were to be my students, I would score them maybe five over 100. However, there is a glimmer of hope that vaccines will arrive the country early next year. Despite this, health experts advise that the protocols must not be ignored. Well, joining us via telephone is Professor Oye Wali Tomaru, a virologist, to talk more about the second wave of coronavirus. Well, Professor, 2020 is obviously a year that is characterized with COVID-19 pandemic, with Nigeria not exempted. Now, let us review our preventive uh, response and management system. Yeah, thank you very much. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead, Prof, we can hear you. Yeah, can you repeat your question again? Sorry, is there's an echo. Okay, let me just try and take that question once again. What I said was uh, 2020 is obviously a year that is characterized with COVID-19 pandemic, with Nigeria not exempted. Uh, let us review our preventive response and management system. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I think one of the problems with this was that uh, I don't think we started on time. Uh, for a country that has very poor uh, health facilities, we should have locked our gates when those first two or three cases came into the country. And then we probably would have been in a position to manage that. Because if you look at uh, uh, almost 80,000 cases now, they actually came out of just about 8,000 people that came into the country. 
and then we contacted it from there, and then it spread all over the country. If we had limited it to just a few at the beginning, before we closed our borders, we probably would have done much better because we'll have had just a few cases and the spread would not have been as much as that. But in addition to that, as a people and the country, we're a bit lawless. We, we managed not to obey rules and regulations. It's like we didn't want to do what was good for us. We were supposed to have protected ourselves through masking, washing of hands and all that, uh, but we didn't. And so we're paying for that neglect of the compliance with the, the preventive measures. All right, Professor, uh, let me just uh, take you in on two things. Uh, you mentioned uh, the, uh, the closure of borders. Right now, the borders have been reopening. That's on the one side. Is it really ill-timed? Then again, the world is already battling with the second wave of the virus, if not lockdown already, with the new measures being rolled out. What should we do differently to prevent the spread? I think the, the basic thing, what has worked in countries that are taking care of that, very important thing is protect yourself. The virus cannot move. It moves with people. Mm. Therefore, if you limit it, limit the uh, movement, then, of course, you limit the spread of the disease. Secondly, if you as an individual does not carry the virus, then you can't spread it to somebody else. And therefore, what you need is to protect yourself by the face mask. So if somebody has it, you don't get it. And if somebody has it and is spreading, it doesn't reach you. So it boils down to me as an individual doing exactly what needs to be done, protect myself, and in the process, protect other people around me. All right, Prof, uh, let's talk more on other issues now. There is another threat of the new strand of the virus detected in the UK. Uh, it has caused many European countries to ban flight from and to the UK. We hear that Nigeria is still considering adopting the same measure. What is your take on this? Are we being proactive enough? I, I think, uh, first of all, um, we need ourselves to make sure that the virus from UK has not entered the country already. Oh. But I doubt that very much. I'm sure we probably have the virus in the country. And I believe that the Ministry of Health will be telling us more in detail about that. Uh, because we had a meeting this morning, and we also had a meeting at the African level, and we is the virus is found in, uh, not just in South Africa, and a few other countries of Africa. So I will, I will believe that we already have the virus in Nigeria. What we need to do, there are two things. You may say if the virus is already here, so why lock the border? Uh, is the question of saying the horse has escaped from the van, uh, therefore you shouldn't lock the, uh, what are you locking the gate for? But then the important thing is, if you don't lock the gate, many more horses will come out, and many more people will come in with the disease. So for me, not a full ban, but I would think at this time, when we have this large number of people coming home for Christmas and all that, uh, a targeted, time-limited ban of price from that place would be something I think we should seriously consider. All right, Prof, just uh, before we'll let you go, uh, do you agree that the health sector will be better for it going forward, or do you foresee the usual neglect? You, you know the problem with us in Nigeria and most other African countries, we live by lessons forgotten. And I'm sure that this epidemic, well, if it eventually goes, we will forget about it. You remember we had Ebola here in 2014? Yes, we did. We set up a few things, but we abandoned all those things as soon as Ebola was over. So if only we will learn from the errors of the past, if we only take this uh, COVID, I mean, we see what COVID has done to us, it has affected the economy, you know, everything that you can imagine. If only we will learn from that, it should make our health sector better. But I'm very pessimistic about that. I don't think we will, make, we will learn that much. And even from what we see going around, it is, it is a country that doesn't seem to have learned too much from the past. And so I, I wish that we will learn this and our health sector will improve, but it's not going to be. And in any case, you have to lay a solid foundation, long time foundation, which we have not laid. So maybe we can begin now and then the future can be better. All right, many thanks to you, Professor Oyewali, a uh, uh, virologist who joined us on the news tonight. It's my pleasure, Justin. Thank you very much.
Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.